ramp that up because we can steady hold and, and we want a fit budget, but we'll over enroll um, as well. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yes. Good. Holding. Holding? <laughs> <laughs> other operating expenses, uh, the majority of these items are fairly similar year over year, except for a few areas, which in, uh, include the 2% increase expected year over year, um, such as telephone and internet, um, and a slight increase in building repairs and maintenance. Fixed expenses are similar year over year, except for um, a proposed 10% increase with the insurance rates, um, as shown here. And capital expenditures, um, again, regarding the instructional expenses mentioned before, um, we did have a meeting prior to this, the balanced budget meeting, that discussed all of the items needed for the school, and this is the same at, um, in, that, in that meeting. What, what's FF&E? Uh, furniture and fixed fixtures. equipment. Fixtures. Um, and equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Everything and anything that kind of like rotates year after year. Um, so there was additional spending needed last year due to safety concerns. Um, this year it will be a little bit less needed. Okay, and then on to the final pages here. Um, we do have a summary of the, file, uh, the fund balance and where we um, were at the beginning of the year and where we're projected to be in the future. Um, we did start our in the year uh, FY18 at $5.1 million. We're projecting... Um, to be at 2.5 million at the end of FY19, adding zero due to our um, balanced budget for next year for, and, and next year at 2.5 million. We have included the five-year capital plans after this, however, we won't be going over those in detail and, unless you do have any questions. Are there any um, questions regarding the proposed budget for FY20? Um, I have kind of a question. Um, sure. uh, Florida Senate Bill uh, S1028, you know about that, about uh, any bonds that were passed uh, regarding teacher pay, uh, with any increases would also be allowed to go to the charter schools also. So you guys are aware of what's going on with that? Howard referendum, yeah, we're, sure. work, we're working through that. Um, I've been asking um, and I'm waiting for our organization to have an answer to that. Um, that will, um, as the, the union just voted on a 2.16 retro, um, that is, um, for the sake of time, let me give you a bigger picture. I, I would love to drive this conversation forward, obviously with my organization, that always is happening, but bring it to the board on the first half of, of next school year, because I think we really need to make some hard decisions moving into next school year. Um, otherwise, retention is not going to be as um, pleasant as it has been in the past, because the school board is uh, leaps and bounds um, ahead of us. Now the referendum monies and everything else, we're trying to really get some clarity on that and what that does look like. It'll be paid out just as would be to my knowledge with the school board as a, as a stipend, like an additional stipend. It's not part of base set, base salary. That's why the district did a 2.16 to my knowledge. Um, but I don't have all of the information yet. Um, the battle was West Palm and Miami. Broward always, um, to my knowledge, had talked about sharing it with charter schools. Yeah. Um, and, and to that point, because um, we generally have a good relationship, you know, public schools and yeah. charter schools generally have a good relationship here in Broward. So uh, you don't usually see a lot of the um, uh, issues that Palm Beach and, and Dade has here in Broward. Um, but my, my question kind of, um, how many instructional staff do you have at Charter? I'm going to ask about non-instructional too. So uh, about 101, I think, that are labeled instructional. Um, I want to say it used to be 97 a couple of years ago. Uh, 141, I think, total staff. Okay. Yep. And for, not, uh, for, I guess, labeled instructional staff, what is the starting pay rate, incoming starting pay rate? <laughs> it is. Our, our base salary is $38,500, which is why I would love to have the conversation. Me too. All right, that's it. Thank you. Good. Okay. Do you have any motion to adopt? Move to approve. Second. Motion. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Thank Item you. Number eight. Uh, this is just, and I know your meeting's coming up. This is just an actual request to uh, uh, approve this uh, engagement letter, so we can hire 
uh, Ke McCullough and Keefe for a uh, unqualified opinion. <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass unanimously. Item nine. Student handbook, just so we can move forward, request for approval with regards to this. The only language that has changed based off of where we were was inserting um, uh, reasonable accommodations will be provided based on a student's religion, disability, or medical condition. And then to the effect of uh, ensuring that if we do not follow through, if families do not follow through with service hours, that they um, will lose their seat um, and will not be able to uh, recommit. And that's something that we've always done. It's just in here. Um, in addition, we've put that on a signature page. We're looking to go digital next year, so it's just an FYI um, that that'll all be a part of that. Um, and this board has always been very supportive in following through on those instances. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass unanimously. Any public input regarding the charter school? Yeah, please. You can just state your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, James Miller, <coughs> 5th Lane, Coral Springs, Florida, 33071. I have some brief remarks. Um, my children are students there, and I'll keep it under three minutes. Um, I've got a handout real quick I'm passing out that I'm going to re reference on a request for an amendment to the charter application. I'm here today to make a request for an amendment to the enrollment preferences for Coral Springs Charter School. In the charter application under organizational performance, subsection student enrollment and conduct, enrollment procedures and rules. My request is to amend rules and preferences on page 35 of 480, which is the second page of that handout, by adding a section F under number four that outlines the preference hierarchy. I'm requesting that a preference be added for siblings of graduates who have graduated from Coral Springs Charter in good standing. Currently, I have a daughter who is in fourth grade this year, but because her brother is a senior this year in graduating, she will not have the same preference he received when he entered charter seven years ago as a sixth grader. Zachary was preferenced in as his brother Josh was, attending, was an attending ninth grader at the time. I've spoken with the AP, Ms. Robbins, and the principal, Mr. Springer, and they advised that they would not oppose such an amendment, but it is functionally out of their hands. They also advise that this has come up in the past. It seems the charter application has make, made a strong effort to address certain nuances when it comes to sibling enrollment when taking into account the lottery system. However, this looks to be a shortcoming that was understandably overlooked, but relatively easy to fix, as it doesn't happen often. It therefore seems to be a positive request with no negative implications. As it happens so seldom, one can logically conclude that the impact to the lottery system would be statistically insignificant. Further, I've yet to discuss with anyone inside or out of charter system that finds this request unusual, quite the opposite in fact. When discussing our current predicament, most who don't know the process will respond with a, that can't be right, or just talk to the principal, they'll fix that. Everyone finds it odd that such a scenario could play out, including my daughter, Emery Miller. Emery, like most, also finds it baffling, and even more so for her, considering it is the only high school she has ever known. Since she was born, she has attended countless school functions at charter from football games, plays, honor society inductions, for both boys, I can proudly say, and coming up soon, a second graduation. It is no easy conversation explaining to my daughter that even though we've lived in the same house for over 20 years, that because she was born one year too late, she does not currently warrant the same preference as her brother, and the and attendance at charter for her may come down to a luck of the draw, unless, of course, the governing board grants this request. Thank you for your consideration in this matter, and I have one question, unless you have any questions of me, which is basically how to uh, follow up on the request. I understand it's something that may legally need to be looked into, and who would I follow up with? So, so what we'll do is, um, not I completely understand where you're coming from, first off, and I'm sure this is so the, the other members of this board. Um, we'll have staff go ahead and, as soon as the meeting's over, give you some contact information, exchange information, and we'll be back in touch with you. Um, if it's okay with the uh, other members of the board, I'd like to have staff go ahead and look at this and bring this back to us at a further date. I'm thankful that you're coming to us now, almost a complete year out from yeah, when your daughter, too, and, which is like perfect timing, and, and <laughs> I know that the, the lottery just took place a few weeks ago. 
um, as my phone's been blowing up, as I'm sure it's, um, everybody else's. So, but yeah, it gives us a lot of time to go ahead and sure. take a look at this, and, and we'll be sure to get in touch with you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other comment from the public uh, related to the charter school? See none. Um, this mo this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I see. Thank you for your presence, Mr. Goodrum. Was all our staff making a noise out there? Don't get me sick. We're in the middle of testing. Dude, I'm telling you, it's so weird to me, though. It's so weird to me, though. Just come on, man. How are you? Nice to see you. Almost done, man. Randy.
All right, one minute warning, guys. One minute warning. Hey, Chief. How are you? All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our May 1 meeting. Let's get off to a great start. We'll start with a roll call. Here. Mayor Brooke. Here. Vice Mayor Carter. Present. Commissioner Vignola. Here. Commissioner Simmons. Here. City Manager Goodrum. Here. City Attorney Hearn. Here. All right, if you'll all please, please rise. Join me in a minute of silence for whatever or whomever you'd like to be silent about. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Come on up, Cindy Brief, our leader of our Chamber of Commerce. You can come on up to the mic. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Cindy. I don't have a T-shirt for you. Next time. I'm up. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> get her one. All right, recognitions. We're starting off with a presentation, I believe, from Liz Kaladny regarding Mental Health Awareness Month. Good, Good morning. morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are pleased to have two of our partners here today to talk about some of the services and the resources they have to offer our community. But before I introduce them, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the city is doing. The art therapy programs at the Coral Springs Museum of Art are still going very strong. There are three of them. Healing with Art is a program for students 14 and older. Art for Educators and Art for Warriors, a program for our veterans. It was the success of these programs that led us to receive, in partnership with the city of Parkland, a $1 million grant from the Bloomberg Philanthropies Group. And we are producing five public art exhibits, exhibits titled The Power of Art, Healing Communities After Gun Violence. The first installation, The Temple of Time, has served as a gathering place for thousands to reflect and leave behind their sorrow. The temple will be burned and those sorrows released in a ceremonial fire May 19th at 7 p.m. Prior to the burn, residents are invited to participate in yoga classes at the temple promoting meditation and wellness. And the dates of those classes are May 11th and May 18th from 6.30 to 7.30. Information about all of these resources and events can be found on the city's website at coralsprings.org. And additionally, we'll be running a one month social media campaign around social, um, uh, mental health and wellness and have produced a one page flyer that outlines a lot of what I just discussed today and more. So now I'd like to in introduce, this is Julie Gordon from um, Eagles Haven and this is Bev Perez from 211 Broward. Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Gordon. I'm the program director with Eagles Haven. Good Eagles morning. Haven. Good morning. Eagles Haven is um, a new MSD wellness center. Uh, it was designed to help and assist everybody affected by the mass shooting last year on February 14th. It's funded through a grant from the Justice Department and currently the grant has not come in so we're being fully funded by United Way and Children's Services Council and we're run by JAFCO, Jewish Adoption and Family Care Options. I've been with JAFCO for 18 years as a clinician and a clinical trainer. So where we're a little bit different in serving the needs of the community is we're not a therapy center, we're a wellness center, and we provide three areas of care. We, we refer for services, so that's our family strengthening program. So if somebody needs therapy in the community, students who are coming in, family members, grandparents, it doesn't matter who you are, if one of your loved ones or you, you work there or say you're a faculty member and your child was impacted or a cousin, this, the trauma has been so far reaching that we're finding that a lot of people need care and support. So we refer for services free of charge. We'll do crisis counseling and then refer out if somebody comes in in crisis. 
We also provide wellness classes. We open five weeks early due to the two suicides um, in March. And uh, we're now just getting the program in terms of the wellness program, which is all classes designed for healing and for fun. So we're focusing on bringing people in, not to focus on the trauma, but to focus on however they want their wellness to look. We just started our programming yesterday. So if you go on eagleshaven.org, you'll see the list of classes starting. We've been functioning before we opened our doors in terms of serving families since January. But in this case, we are offering the wellness programs, which is like yoga classes, meditation. We're going to have improv classes. Um, we're providing, we're having one of the um, spas in the community donated a spa, a spa day. So we're able to give 25 people uh, free therapy, massage therapy or facials, things like that. The community has been amazing and we couldn't do it without the community and all the volunteers helping. Um, and then the other is education, where we're going to be holding education classes and trainings and whatever is needed. And right now we're starting to have teens just come in to do their homework. So they'll come in and we like to feed people. We like to give you a good cup of coffee and make it a healing environment. So if there's any questions, that's what we're about. Thank you very much for everything you're doing for our community. It's really very special, very needed. And I know you've had to do a lot of work and a lot of organizing and you're a wonderful leader for us. Thank you so much. And it's our honor. It's an unfortunate position to even need, but we're very grateful to be able to do whatever we can. And we're getting so much feedback from the community and we welcome more feedback. So if somebody says, you know, I'd really like this class or my kid would really like this class, art therapy, whatever it is, um, we're totally open to that because it's about the community. It's not about what we think the community needs. How, how could somebody be a community partner? If somebody wanted to be a coffee donor, how would they? Um, do usually they'll call us, and everything is, again, is on eagleshaven.org. We've had, uh, we have an inactive volunteer program where we're going <coughs> through volunteers. We have a volunteer meeting on the third Sunday at 10 o'clock every month, which is also on the website. And a lot of people have just called and said, I want to do something to help. So they'll, if they have an idea of what they would like to do, we're open. Um, and some people, we already have somebody who, you know, his, his like toonies were right next door. They've been giving us food. We'd love to get more restaurant vendors to feed everybody coming in. We're having a, a kids group tonight. Um, it'll probably start up very slowly, but that's okay. But we're going to make sure and feed them and make it a, a very welcoming environment. And it, the best way to heal is to feed people and provide good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And what is the number to Eagles Haven, if you don't mind? It's 954-618-0350. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah, we'll give you a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, I'm short. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank Liz and the city of Coral Springs for having 211 here. Good morning, everyone. Um, so 211 is a three-digit number that you can dial that ends in 11, just like the 311, the 411, 911. There is a 211. Uh, when you dial 211, you will get a highly trained counselor that's going to assess your needs and refer you to the best resource. We are a nonprofit, and we have over 4,000 programs in our database that are also nonprofit. And what we do is just try to connect the community to health and human resources without you having to navigate through different systems several times, we're your one-stop shop, we're the number you call when you don't know who to call. Um, on top of that, we also handle the crisis calls. So the domestic violence, the child abuse, and the suicide calls do come to us. Um, suicide is actually the second leading cause of death amongst our youth. So my job is to make it prevalent for the youth to know that that is a safe place for them to call as well. We are confidential, free, 24-7. If you just need someone to talk to at four in the morning, you can dial 211. Um, we recently started our uh, text line, which you dial your zip code to 898211, and you can get connected to resources as well. Um, so we do refer to Eagles Haven and other organizations that are in our database that are willing to help, whether it's basic needs or mental health, substance abuse, whatever it may be. Um, please know that 211 is a resource. We do have a website as well, 211-broward.org. Just by going on our website, everything that our counselors see in the database anyone in the public is able to see as well. So you can see all of our resources. Um, we do have a language line as well. So language isn't a barrier. 
Um, immigration status does not matter to 211. We really just want to connect the community to health and human resources. Thank you all so much. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions? No, I've no. been there. It's a great facility. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank oh, and we'll uh, get a picture with you all right in front. Very well. Would you like to come? Everybody. So uh, this is the first proclamation uh, for the National Day of Prayer. Who's joining us from Staffdale? All right. And clergy. And clergy. Wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. What a team. What a team. Thank you. Pastor, great to see you. Welcome back. So uh, the Clergy Coalition of Coral Springs and Parkland, we're proud to announce the 31st Annual National Day of Prayer that's occurring tomorrow, Thursday, May 2nd, at our Coral Springs Charter School at 7 p.m. The city's recognized as an inclusive community, thankfully, and a community of great respect. As such, we embrace different faiths. It's clearly demonstrated in our annual celebration that highlights the strength and diversity that's found in our community. We're proud of our vibrant and unique relationship with this fantastic clergy coalition and with whom we've partnered in several programs and events. Every house of worship in our greater Coral Springs area is invited to participate. There's a youth representative from participating congregations that lead the prayers while the clergy stands by to lend support. This is a non-denominational event. It's hosted by the Clergy Coalition of Coral Springs and Parkland with the support of the Coral Springs Multicultural Advisory Committee, and we bring people together from all faiths to pray, sing, chant, and we demonstrate our respect for the world's religions while praying for our nation, for our leaders, for our community, and for peace in our community. We invite all residents to join us in this event with your families, friends, and share in common fellowship and we invite you to join us uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Charter School. Any words from the Clergy Coalition or Vice Mayor? I've attended probably the last 10 years, and it's a wonderful, wonderful event to embrace and enjoy the diversity from every, every faith. Anybody from the other faith? I have been doing the National Day of Prayer with the Multicultural Advisory Commission, Committee since 2004, and it has been a unique joy every year. Every year it has a little bit of a different flavor based upon those who come and participate in it. One of our news bloggers just wrote a nice article about the National Day of Prayer, and they pointed out that the National Committee emphasizes its Judeo-Christian roots at a very high level. In Coral Springs, we've chosen to emphasize diversity at a much higher level, and we seek every house of faith or every worship center to come in and be a part of it, and it is amazing to be able to watch as people come united in heart to bless our community, to bless our state, to bless our nation. And that's the idea behind it. And although we all don't believe the same thing, we do believe it's important to bless our community and live together in peace and harmony. That's the essence of the event. So I hope that you're able to make it tomorrow night at 7. 
National Day of Prayer, where it is what it says, a national day that we pray for our nation. And we are not separated by culture, by religious ideation, or religious philosophies. We believe in the worth of prayer. And when we pray, we're seeking divine intervention that our affairs and the land in which we live that will continue to be blessed by God. And we need that even more so now than in the recent past, what we've seen, we need to be praying and we invite everyone who knows the worth of prayer, however you pray, to join us in prayer. So the special proclamation for the National Day of Prayer, each year our community comes together, regardless of our differences in faith, to pray for our nation and its leaders. As a city, we believe there is strength in diversity, and this year marks the 31st celebration of this national event. Therefore, we, the City Commission of Coral Springs, proclaim May 2nd as National Day of Prayer, signed by the mayor and its commissioners. Congratulations. Next proclamation is for emergency medical services. Thank you. Can um, all members of the fire department please come up to the front? Captain Matz, can you bring your crew up, please? So, Mayor, this is a uh, proclamation to recognize EMS Week for 2019. Uh, we have with us our medical director, Dr. Peter Entebbe, our EMS uh, chief, Juan Cardona, and then uh, some of the command staff and administrative staff here to, uh, to accept this proclamation. Um, EMS is a big part of what we do, um, and it's a service that is uh, provided to the community that makes a difference in their lives every day. Uh, recognizing what our men and women of this organization do every day in EMS is, is extremely important to us. Um, so I'd ask if Dr. Entevi has any, anything he wants to say in reference to EMS Week or Chief Cardona. Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Entevi, the medical director. Uh, I have to say that I travel around the country and uh, must say that this city, with the leadership and all the, uh, you know, basically we have everything that we need here to actually provide the best care for our patients. So. Everyone sitting in the audience and all the folks in this community should know that these men and women here and all those on the streets today are you know, protecting us in a way that is better than any other place in this country. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to work with these, these people. Thank you. On behalf of the commission, we feel the same way. We thank you so much for your service to our community. You guys and gals are the best. And uh, please keep up the great work. We really appreciate it. Vice Mayor, will you read? Special Proclamation Emergency Medical Services Week. Our emergency medical service teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day. During this week, we recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers and ask our residents to join us in thanking them. Therefore, we as the City Commission of Coral Springs proclaim May 19th to 25th as Emergency Medical Services Week, signed by the Mayor and Commissioners. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
So I'm going to ask you guys to stay up here for a minute because we have one more. So, Mayor, if I may, um, we have a, a, another proclamation for a national award that was won by the Florida Firefighter Safety and Health Collaborative. Uh, Captain Bader, you want to come over next to me here? Over, Chris. So um, this is a very, uh, a very important award as well as a very prestigious award. And uh, the organization that Chris chairs is the Florida Firefighter Safety and Health Collaborative. The Safety and Health Collaborative was an initiative that um, started back in 2015, 2016. Uh, when the Coral Springs Parkland Fire Department started to look at their safety culture and, and make sure we were doing what was proper for the men and women that serve. And uh, Chief Whalen and, and Captain Bader uh, went and did some research and, and did a lot of hard work and came back with some recommendations. And uh, in, in April of 2016, the first meeting uh, that kind of started all of this was held in Coral Springs at the Coral Springs Regional Institute of Public Safety. And from there, Chris has put in a tremendous amount of work, passion, love, care into this, into this great initiative. And it now has not only grown into a statewide organization, but has grown into a best practice model throughout the country that other state organizations are picking up on and now starting their own collaboratives. Chris serves with a board of very dedicated men and women that are truly out there looking out for the safety, wellness, and health of all the first responders, not only throughout the state, but throughout the country. And for that, the collaborative was given the Senator Paul S. Sabanis Fire Service Leadership Award. Um, we were up in Washington last week, and I was uh, fortunate enough to be there with Chris and, and the rest of the collaborative as they, as they got their award. And I'm um, just very, very proud of, of not only the initiative, but the hard work that has gone in and the difference it's made in our organization. That's, that's so wonderful. Uh, Chris, I've known you for over 18 years, uh, and I knew your commitment to our community and our city back then. And I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'd like to read this uh, before I present it to you. Uh, this is special recognition for Captain Christopher Bader, Coral Springs Parkland Fire Department. The city of Coral Springs is proud to honor you for receiving the Senator Paul Sarbanes Fire Service Safety Leadership Award for your work with the Florida Firefighter Safety and Health Collaborative. Through your dedication and hard work, the collaborative is working statewide to address mental and physical health issues, improve safety, and give Florida fi firefighters healthier lives, healthier careers, and healthier retirements. Congratulations, Captain. Mayor, this is the, uh, the actual award that they were given um, at the, uh, the awards dinner. So our next proclamation is National Police Week 2019. Uh, this is a request that our commission proclaim May 12th to the 18th as National Police Week in the city of Coral Springs. Chief, take it away. Yeah, every year on May 13th, I travel to Washington, D.C. to honor the members of law enforcement that gave the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their community. This year, uh, 158 names 
of officers that were killed in 2018 will be engraved on the wall. Uh, since then, uh, in 2019, an additional 35 officers have been killed. These were normal, everyday human beings that just wanted to make it home to see their families, but never did. At a time when nationally police officers feel like they're under attack, I want this commission to know that we appreciate, I appreciate, and everybody in the department appreciates this uh, council uh, giving us this proclamation, recognizing uh, Police Week and honoring those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. I know I speak for everybody in my department uh, when I say that we are grateful to this commission and the community for support they give us, and we thank you for this proclamation. It's our pleasure. Commissioner, to read that. Yeah. This is a special proclamation for National Police Week. The Coral Street Police Department plays an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of our residents. It is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of law enforcement and the members of the Coral Springs Police Department recognize their duty to serve the people. During National Police Week, we ask that our residents join us in commemorating those dedicated law enforcement officers, past and present. Therefore, we, the City Commissioner of Coral Springs, proclaim the week of May 12th to 18th, 2019 as National Police Week and signed by the entire commission. Thank you. Way to follow. The commission is going first. Uh, our last recognition is the 50th anniversary of the Mission Church, which is the evidence of the First of all, we appreciate very much that we're celebrating this wonderful week. I thought it was only a day. <laughs> what I'd like, uh, what started out as the position started out as scribes has now turned into a very professional organization with certified municipal clerks, master municipal clerks. We have uh, certified records analysts and records managers and those require six tests to be passed. So we have grown into quite the organization, and so we do a little bit more than just taking notes at a meeting. Uh, may I introduce my team? Okay, yeah. starting down here we have Joshua Cabrejo, Georgia Elliott, Amy Gastineau, certified municipal clerk, Allison Morales, <laughs> Deborah Ruzga, and Brianna Thompson. And we're missing three of our staff, they're part-timers, I'd like to read the names and recognize them. Teresa, Alexandric, Anne-Marie Bodine, and Ellen Clark. Thank you. Great, wonderful. Uh, well, before I read the proclamation, I just wanna say that when I decided to run for office, uh, this was the office that I, I met with first. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for anyone that's in the city that's interested in running, when they come and meet this wonderful and professional staff, they feel good um, about throwing their hat into the ring because they're running into this professional staff who answer questions, they're always responsive. Um, they, you know, they wanna make sure that they're doing their job uh, and we're very fortunate to have a staff like this in our clerk's office. So, uh, special recognition for Municipal Clerks Week. The City of Coral Springs is proud of the dedication and vital services provided by the Office of the City Clerk. We support awareness of this essential role in local government and join the International Institute of Municipal Clerks in honoring our staff during the 50th Annual Municipal Clerks Week, May 5th through the 11th, 
And I definitely echo Commissioner Simmons' comments about the clerk's office. They were amazing to deal with as uh, we were running for office. Next is public comment. Are there any public speakers? Mayor, I have one signed speaker, Sandra, last Hanna. initial T. Hannah, T-A-N-N-E. Thank Sandra, you. Sandra, are you still here? I heard it, yep. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Welcome, Sandra. Thank you. Sandra Tana, 3208 Northwest 87th Ave, Coral Springs. So, Park Mom's back. Um, a lot of you in this room will remember the founding of Park Mom Volunteer Program when my son was like one, so 2006. Um, it kind of went on the wayside for a while. We've been busy in parks in other cities and doing other things, but we're in a new season of life and my friends are having grandkids and one of them's walking, so we're gonna be at Mullins all the time. So I mentioned to Mr. Engel earlier that I'm interested in getting it back up. So I'm looking for the support of the community. I'm sure it'll be there. Um, everything's in place, we just have to get it back. I make one request, um, probably about four years into it, I think when Vince was mayor, um, it went into VIP park moms and then it was changed over into something where it was very formalized and needed a background check. I'd like to drop that and bring it back to a casual program because that's when we get everybody interested very easily. Everybody was really turned off on, they gotta take my fingerprints and I get that. So that's where I'm at, I'm looking for support. Tell us a little bit about the park moms program. Okay. Um, the reason that Park Moms was founded was, I'm gonna try to do the short version. <laughs> I was in the park with my kid, he was one, we had a play group, of, play group of about 10 little boys and we were at the tot lot at Cyprus and there was construction going on and there was a plastic fencing that the guys didn't close I, I guess the day before and one of the kids in two seconds almost ran into the street. So I was like, okay, we gotta do something about this. I called Parks and Rec, they were there like right away, they fixed it, I said, this is awesome. How great would it be if we just had an extra set of eyes and ears in all the parks in the city and just the moms that are there can just get a little training and it'll help. And that's what we did. Can dads be a part of it? Yes, <laughs> park moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas. Actually, I'd like to have a little side thing. Um, we have to do like VIP park kids because in these times, things have changed. Uh, Sandra, I, I, your three minutes are about to run. I would uh, suggest that you send us an email uh, to all of us and then we'll also hear more from Rick Engel. And I really appreciate your interest in bringing the program back and helping our community. Okay, and I just wanna say thank you, Mr. Hearn. I'll see you, I guess, next week for our appointment. Sounds good. Very good, thanks. Thank you very much. Would anybody else from the public like to be heard? Okay, we'll have you come up, Cindy, first. Good morning, commissioners and city manager. My name is Cindy Brief. I'm the CEO of the Coral Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to let you know that May 5th through May 11th is National Small Business Week. So the chamber will be do, doing a lot of special events to highlight our small businesses. As you know, small businesses are the backbone of our community and our, biz, our business economy. So um, what I'd like to know, we have some special things planned, but also if any of you commissioners wanna go with me to meet with the small business and we could do a video or something like that. And if you wanna even pick the businesses that you would like to go to, I'd love to do that with you. So I'll be reaching out to all of you. And also wanna uh, bring up the fact that the Broward Council of Chambers, which are all the chambers in Broward County, do a small business luncheon. I believe it's on May 17th. And at that lunch, we honor the small business leader of the year from all of the chambers that are part of our group. Um, the, this year, Kim K. Dell from Northwest Sports, Northwest Broward Sports and Activities is our small business leader of the year. So she will be honored at that luncheon. Would so I thank you and I look forward to celebrating National Small Business Week with you. Thank you, what's the date and time in the luncheon? Um, I will definitely get back to you with that because I don't know the definite date, but okay. it's at the Renaissance Hotel in Plantation. And would you like us to proclaim this week in future years as Small Business Week and bring you up? Yes, that would be great. Would that be okay with you all? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. By acclamation. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. 
And I saw one other hand go up. Fred Healy, 10839 Northwest 45th Street in Coral Springs. Good morning, Brett. Good morning. How are you today? Good, thank you. Thank you to all the um, first responders and all the, the people who serve and protect us. Um, I'm here again for the third time. I've spoken with 462,712 million people about this. It's an ongoing problem for over a year for my daughter and I, and she is a survivor thanks to those responders in the Douglas school shooting. Um, it seems as though it's falling on deaf ears, and I've had an incident since then that she almost lost her father to law enforcement. I had somebody uh, from law enforcement, it's law enforcement that owns the CrossFit gym, that when we hear weights pounding in our house at five o'clock in the morning, we hear weights, my daughter hears there's a shooting outside and gets on the floor. And nobody's doing anything about this. Um, I'm gonna continue up the ladder until I get to President Trump. If he'll build a wall, I'll, I'd be happy. Um, he's not allowed to open his doors at five o'clock in the morning, pounding weights, people screaming, Again, that's what we hear. Um, my daughter is going to the art therapy, and I want to thank Julie Krolak because um, she brought it to her attention. And, um, and my daughter's a part of that, that therapy, and uh, she needs it. I need it. I had, um, I had law enforcement outside my house at 5 in the morning, and because of this ongoing problem, I came out and I flashed my light in, a, in an SUV that was all blacked out because I didn't know if the Broward Sheriff that owns this gym is tired of me calling the police and we've spent tens of thousands of dollars on law enforcement going out there from me calling. Um, and when I came out and put my flashlight in the window, the truck started up and I thought it was somebody out here to take care of me. I thought he got his friends and he got somebody outside my house, and I started dialing law enforcement, Coral Springs Police, because his truck started up, so I thought I caught somebody coming to take care of me. This is no joke anymore. He mocks me, he mocks us, he makes law enforcement look foolish with some of the lyrics on his songs, he makes our kids look like they're not important, he's teaching our children that this is okay as long as you have power, position, and money. It's ridiculous, it's unacceptable. I have a keg party in my house from five in the morning till eight at night, loud music, people screaming. It's ridiculous, and I'm not going anywhere. I've had enough, I've had enough. When I called Coral Springs Police, because I was taking a picture of the license plate, because I didn't know who it was, he got out and started coming towards me and asked me if I was out of my effing mind. And he said, what's that in your hand? I thought I was about to get shot and killed. You would think I would say my phone. I was so nervous and so filled with these guns and this shooting and everything. I said the word gun. And if there's any law enforcement in here, you know I'm lucky to be standing here. She could have woke up for school that day with me being the sheet in the driveway that she's on the news talking about how she stepped over dead bodies under sheets and they were dead. And she stuttered trying to change the word dead. I've got it in a video. If anybody wants to see some of the videos of this gym, wants to see some of the videos of my daughter. Mr. Healy, I'm, I'm sorry for both you and your daughter's sufferings. Uh, Do something, the, please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you, man. Because I'm not stopping. You all talk about prayer. I can't even do my meditation in the morning. Prayer says, I got this. Meditation says, I'm listening for the answer because he's telling me, no, you don't. I do. I can't as, do that meditation. As a result of our meeting last week, I have made a request and we'll follow up with you. Thank you, Mr. Healy. I need more here. than words, please. I understand. So does my daughter. Forget me. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike, did you want to be heard? Okay. Anybody else from the public wish to be heard? All right. Thank you. Public comments complete. There are no public hearings. Are there any objections to item number 15 being pulled from consent? I'd also like to pull 12. Okay, so 15 is pulled and 12 is pulled. Uh, may I entertain a motion to approve the rest? I move. Moved. Second. Seconded. Any discussion on the rest other than 12 and 15? All in favor say aye. 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 Car carries unanimously. 
Um, number 12, Consultant Services for Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sure. So I, I pulled this because when, when I was reviewing it, I thought, why do we need a master plan? We've already got 51 parks and 33 playgrounds. I just thought that was a bit excessive. And after ex explanation, it's actually a great idea because with this plan, we will be able to um, restructure as needed because needs change, um, facilities change, people change. When I moved here, 36% of the population was under the age of 18. Seniors were 6%. That's 26% now under the age of 18 and seniors are moving closer to 15%. So there is a, a difference and a need for change. So this will help review, but the best part of a master plan is it gives us the ability to apply for grants. And so I am definitely in favor of it. Mr. Okay, Mayor. I'll take that as a motion. Second. Seconded, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, approves unanimously. Passes unanimously. Uh, next we're on to number 16. 15. 15. 15, yeah. So city manager, you want, that's going to be heard another day? Yes, we just okay. said we can pull it and then we'll bring it back at a future meeting. You got it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, number 16, federal, state, city, residential, commercial repair grant programs. Susie? Good morning. This is an item to renew contracts on the three categories for the federal, state, and local uh, grants that we that we process. Uh, it just, I think, is here before you under policy because of the amount. And uh, we do 22 homes a year with this money. And it was processed with, uh, with an RFP that was done in 2016. And this is just to renew it for another two years. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, we'll hear a motion then. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? 22 homes a year, better than zero. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, carries unanimously. Uh, next is an appointment uh, to the Neighborhood Environmental Committee to consider the appointment of Nancy Mateer to this committee. Move to approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. I just want to extend my appreciation to Nancy. Uh, she was a colleague uh, that ran for mayor in the city election, March 12, and she's staying involved and engaged and contributing to our community. I see her on a regular basis, including at the MLK luncheon the other day, and uh, it's great to have her, and I look forward to welcoming her to this committee. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Uh, next are appointments to the CIGC. It's a request to appoint. I believe there are four that are on there. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next, we're on commission communications. Who would like to begin? We'll start with you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. So I would like to request of all of you that we have a proclamation for Turquoise Takeover May 8th and 12th, and this is about lung cancer. And every five minutes, a woman in this country learns that she has lung cancer. Mm. But anybody can get it, and you don't have to be a smoker. So I don't believe that they'll be coming to the commission, but I'd like us to at least send them a proclamation. Sounds good to me. Okay, thank you. I appreciate All right, that. Approved. Secondly, um, so in the past, we had uh, Amy Tart from uh, Lady in the Mug and Mike Del Pozo from Del Pozo Window Cleaning come up and tell us about Honor Flight. And Honor Flight, I first heard about, I wanna say two years ago when the mayor from Sunrise, Mike Ryan, reached out to us and said that Coral Springs has the lowest representation. When I saw that I had to be at the airport at 4 a.m., I lost interest immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when I, the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what, we've got the World War II and the Korean veterans here and we really should encourage them and support them. What I found to be most awesome is to get them to go back to Washington, D.C. and to see how they are being honored and recognized is only $400. And that's for you and the veteran to go or whoever wants to. And I'm not asking the city for dollars or anything, but just help in promoting it, perhaps, you know, add our recognition or our stature to it so that it does get the encouragement. I'm happy to reach out to the assisted living facilities to find out who those people are. So I know our schools are active in this, or at least they were. 
Um, but that might be a good thing. I know a lot of students will go ahead and they'll take part in this, um, you know, whether it be student government kids or debate kids and, things, and, and they go ahead and, and they'll do that. So um, I know years ago in the college recommendation letters I write, I know a lot of the kids, um, they used to take part in honor flight. But I think we should absolutely, if you want, I'll bring that up in my next principal meetings yeah. to see and we can try to push that and, and that way connect some of the kids to do it and they'll raise money. And, and yeah. I think I it's good for them to go and spend time with the veteran and, and go up and, and um, go to DC with them. So I think it'd be great. Yeah, Don, thank is you. this something that we're allowed to have a link on our website to? I, the organization, I, I communicated with Mike Ryan on this yesterday actually as well. I think it's a well-established organization that would be part of your your goals and objectives, you know, honoring the military. I think you can easily put that on there, yeah. Great. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. I appreciate You're your welcome. support. Thanks for bringing that to us, Amy and Mike. So this morning, after the uh, wet down of the fire truck, we are going to have the rededication of the covered bridge. It has finally been restored and restored back to its original state, which is pretty awesome. So. Thank you so much to the Historical Advisory Committee for their guidance and dedication. And tomorrow night, as you were told, is National Day of Prayer, so I hope you'll come out and join me. It's really a wonderful, wonderful experience. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have today. Thank you. Commissioner Vignola. <laughs> um, well, first off, I want to talk about Team Political Forum. <coughs> we had that event. Uh, great event this year. Uh, Joyce, I don't know if she's still here. Uh, okay. Joyce Campbell worked really hard this year, um, along with a lot of other staff members, to try to make this uh, a great event. And it was going into it, we thought we were going to have a lot less kids because the next day kids had off of school and we didn't know if the interest was going to be there. Um, we ended up having a packed house, which is awesome. And, and uh, you know, I appreciate the support of this commission and, and all of you guys and, and the other elected officials for coming out. And I know it's nerve wracking. You don't know what the kids coming up are going to ask. And, um, right. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for participating and, and to our staff for putting it together. And, and I just want to say across the board, our, um, I am really appreciative of the people that uh, that work here in the city of Coal Springs and the job that they do um, day in and day out. Anytime there's any type of issue or anything, um, you know, through, through the city manager, um, we're able to get in touch with people and, and help our residents and, and help their needs. So I want to thank you guys for that. Um, I'll have my office hours on Tuesday, May 14th in May. Um, and that'll be a noon at Pasquale's to make an appointment. Please call Randy at 954-344-5906. And if you'd like to reach me directly, if you can't wait until that point or any other time, call me on my cell phone at 954-632-7544. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Simmons. All right. Um, so this past weekend, I attended Earth Fest at the uh, Sawgrass Nature Center, and it was uh, a wonderful, uh, and it was actually a beautiful morning. Uh, it didn't wasn't too hot, uh, but uh, I had a great time. I'm sorry I missed the tree planting. Uh, blame it on my eyes not seeing my schedule uh, <laughs> the way it should have been seen. Um, but it was it was still a wonderful event, and to see it well attended and so many people there. Um, I, I got an, a avocado tree, so I'm excited to see that grow. Don't I know it takes forever in a day, so I'll sit out there with my chair and watch it. So um, that was good. I also attended the Savor the Notes uh, Jazz Brunch, another wonderful event. Uh, staff worked really hard this weekend uh, to put on two wonderful events, and it was just it was it was awesome to get out there and see all the hard work put into it. So uh, bang up job as usual. Um, the the One Breath One Community Yoga uh, event was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, May 11th at. On the website it says 5.30, but I think, I, I'm not sure, I know, on the website it says 5.30, but I, Liz had said 6.30, so uh, <laughs> I think May 18th is the 6.30 one, but, um, you know, please come out, uh, that's a good way to utilize the Temple of Time uh, and just, you know, all come together, still, you know, using the, the uh, power of uh, uh, healing and art uh, with that, so please come out for that. And the last thing I want to talk about is session is almost done. And they are working very, very hard to uh, continue to pass legislation that takes away, um, um, uh, you know, local authority. Uh, and recently, uh, Senate Bill 168, known as the Sanctuary City Ban, uh, was passed out of the Senate and it will go to the governor's desk because that is a priority of his. Uh, Coral Springs was never a sanctuary city. I don't think any previous administrations had passed any ordinances to say they were a sanctuary city. So if anyone would like to correct me, please do. But I don't think we've ever said that. Uh, what this bill amounts to uh, is attempting to turn our police department into federal uh, agents. 
uh, having our, our police departments comply with ICE detainer requests uh, is basically a federal and state unfunded mandate, which we all love here at the local level. <laughs> um, I believe this bill is a political stunt. Uh, this creates a culture of fear. Obviously, if someone is arrested and they're doing something bad, they deserve to uh, face the full extent of the law. Uh, but what this does is create a culture of fear. Uh, a police officer policing a community uh, is only going to do its job as well as it can if they have a strong relationship in the community. Uh, inviting people to not report crimes, uh, inviting people to stay away from law enforcement agencies will hinder the ability, ability of our police department to do their job. Um, and so I, it is my hope that our police department is just wonderful and uh, stay focused on what they are doing to continue to protect our community and keep us safe. All of the training, all of the, uh, all of the, the, everything that they do and have to keep us safe, the way they were able to respond to incidences, um, not just on you know February 14th, um, but also many other incidences as well, is due to the fact that they're able to focus on what their their mission is, and that's to protect Coral Springs. Uh, and so I, I hope uh, that. Uh, we can stay focused on that and that our police department is not doing the work of the federal government. They have their own law enforcement agency and they should use that. Our police department is here for the people of Coral Springs and that's where I'll end on that. Okay, thank you. So I, as I'm sitting up here, uh, I do want to acknowledge your work on the teen political forum. It was phenomenal. It was great. And what I thought was one of the things I thought that was awesome is I felt like every young person that came and spoke, whether they were on the dais or they were a questioner, I thought they were respectful and really cared. And I remember, you know, somebody asked a question about what had occurred at Taravella with the BSO officer. And I had said, you know, it looks, it certainly looked bad from that short clip, but not to make a judgment until you know all of the facts. And I felt like that landed very well with all the students. Nobody, you know, like argued back or yelled out. And I just thought that was incredible. So keep up the great work. I really, really appreciate it. It's such a wonderful way to engage, you know, our youth. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, I had a great ride along actually yesterday with a wonderful community police officer, uh, Officer Kajus. And um, I just love how she engages, you know, our community. And uh, Chief, I appreciate your help in setting that up. Uh, if you haven't done a ride along recently, I'd, I'd urge you to do one. Uh, it's uh, very educational and uh, we, we really have an amazing department and she's a great representative, so thank you for that. Um, I wanna always promote the June 18 election. It's uh, important that everybody be heard. There are six candidates. Uh, you can get your absentee ballot by BrowardSOE.org. And um, when is the deadline for that to be put in by? June 11th, maybe? I would like to refer to my, my file before I give no out problem. the date. No problem. I'm estimating that, but uh, you don't have to be absent to vote by absentee ballot. And if June 18 is problematic for you to vote, then please request your absentee ballot, BrowardSOE.org. Uh, are we going to be putting up any uh, signs? Do you know? We are. Great. I appreciate that. The last day to request a ballot is June 12th. Great. June 12th. Thank you, Larry. And the last day to register is May 20th. And last Thank day to register, May 20th. Thank you. And then lastly, well, two more things. Uh, one is if you haven't downloaded the MyCS app, please download it. It's a great way to connect with us and it's a great way to get information. And lastly, uh, I know we had a mayor's chess challenge with, for Mayor Campbell. I do play a little chess. I want to bring back the mayor's chess challenge whenever that can be. So if I can have approval for that, I'd appreciate it. That's a countywide thing, and it, right. it rotates you host it, right. so gotcha. it'll come back. Okay. They always is in February. I think February, yeah. Like it's always busy time good. during soccer. I look forward to that. And that's all I have. Uh, city manager's communication. Mayor, I have no report. We will be meeting uh, out back to wash down some fire apparatuses and then head over to our bridge. Uh, bridge that has been uh, redone by the Public Works Department. So 
we'll see you all over there. Looking forward to that. And John Hearn? Mayor, the legislature is wrapping up many of their bills. We, we are uh, voicing our concerns on, on numerous ones of those that take away our home rule through the Florida League of Cities and the Broward League of Cities. So probably at the next meeting, I'll give you an update on the carnage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're adjourned.